Think Retmobile, think Mondeo. It's Britain's biggest selling fleet car with over 600,000 sales in 45 variants. And it's this 1.8 LX which sells most of all. And the Mondeo's arch rival is, of course, the Vauxhall Vectra, the car I shall be driving today. <sighs> there are over 80 different incarnations, and so far it has sold 400,000. The most popular being, by far and away, the 1.8 LS, although I am duty-bound to tell you that the GLS has a dual-tone horn. But if you were driving 35,000 miles a year, which of these cars would you like to spend the rest of your life in? you notice about the Mondeo is where you park your bottom. It's very easy to get a decent driving position and the seats are very supportive, making those long slogs up the motorway just a little bit more bearable. I, on the other hand, feel like I'm perched on top of a bar stool. Driver comfort has never been one of the Vectra's strong points. There's very, very little lumbar support in the seat and you're constantly hitting your elbow on this silly centre console. And that's why the Vectra has always been the osteopath's friend. The Mondeo's engine pulls very nicely, getting up to 60 in just 10.2. And were I visiting clients in Germany, I could get it up to a thoroughly respectable 121 miles per hour. But at higher revs, the engine's very noisy and there's a lot of tyre roar. But I do have a big chunky button radio to drown out the noise. Oh dear, how is everybody today? But I can turn the cackling morning oh DJ down using my radio controls on the steering wheel. Very good. What's not so good is the performance. It's a second and a bit slower to 60 than the Mondeo, which in Repland is a very, very important second and a half. The ride is a bit fidgety and restless. The gearbox, as cooperative as a doctor's receptionist. But for me, the worst aspect of the Vectra is the grip. Go into a roundabout like this and you do feel it getting really quite light at the front. And in the wet, it really does get very hairy indeed. I'm just trying to see if there's anything good we can say. Um... Back in the Mondeo, things are going rather well. It's actually a very good car to drive, whether you're slogging up the motorway or weaving around a business park. The gear changes are smooth and positive, the clutch light. It's actually a very easy car to live with. There's plenty of room on the dash for your motorway detritus, and should entrepreneurial inspiration strike, then there's always a pen to hand. And look, the meanest, most hateful cup holder in the world, and you put your cup there, and presto, it's in the passenger's lap. Very good. In a company car, the devil really is in the detail, and one thing the Ford has, which the Vectra hasn't, is big pockets behind the front seats, the perfect place to keep your dismembered map. But there is good news in the Vectra. I'm positive of it. The spec is a lot better. You get driver and passenger airbag as standard, you get Traffic Master, fantastic, an atomic clock, and the only styling flourish on the whole car, which are these integrated wing mirrors. The fact that they're too small, let's not carp. But when it comes to storage space, very important to reps, it looks like our young Catherine has the edge. Well, it depends on how you look at it, really, because mine has got more room when the seats are down, and his has got more room when the seats are up. So lots of room for my briefcase and lino samples, but frankly, at this moment in time, I don't care. I just want to get away from this miserable, baleful, shiversome car. Where's your jacket? Leave it. I never liked it anyway. <laughs>